because she she spoke and she read in the voice of the last uh, piece, and I had never heard a poet read that way or you know, perform that way, and I didn't I had never seen her, and so she was so small and with this voice and this power. I said, you know, that must be what I'm, I'm atomic. She's a uh, she's a something of the an atomic bomb, atomic bomb, because she was small and so powerful. Because she did that in, in the piece tonight. But as I said, I've never seen anyone do that. It was, it was just so powerful. To read a couple of her poems, which you know, Sonia was Sonia was very vocal in her feelings. So to find something that I could read, just <laughs> 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 Not sure, easy, easy thing. I mean, she was pretty, pretty strong. Let's see. This is from It's a New Day. This is certainly one of the publications of Broadside Press, and there's a nice picture of her. Those are twins, yeah. Who are fully grown now in their 40s. Okay. When we come, when we come riding our green horses against the tenement dust, when we come tall as waves, holding our black, brown, high yellow tomorrows, then you will hear young hooves thundering in space, and we will rise with rainbows from the sea to silence, our yesterday blues, when we come riding our green breath against the morning sky. And another one is, um, we can be, again, she spoke, to the youth often. We can be anything we want, for we are the young ones, walking without footprints, moving our bodies in tune to songs, echoing us, the beautiful black ones, recently born, walking new rhythms, leaving behind us a tap dancer's dream of Sunday night at Sullivan shows. We will be all that we want, for we are the young ones, bringing the world to a black beginning. And one of my favorites by her is, uh, this is a very solemn, quiet song to PJ, two years old, who said, write a poem for me in Portland, Oregon. If I could ever write a poem as beautiful as you, little two-year-old brother, I would laugh, jump, leap up, and touch the stars, because you be the poem I try for each time I pick up a pen and paper. You and Morani and Mungu be our blue-black stars that will shine on our lives and makes us finally be. If I could ever write a poem as beautiful as you, little two-year-old brother, poetry would go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so that means something really nice by her. And, um, I'll just read um, a couple by Lucille. Why don't I do some? Oh, yes. one more by um, by Sonia. Okay. Then we'll switch over okay. to Lucille. Um, the poems. Uh, it's a new day. It's a new day. Is a, a collection of poems for children, right? And it was written during the period that Sonia was in the Nation of Islam. Um, Sonia, like Amiri Baraka, had this really has. I shouldn't speak past tense, has this wonderful arc of life experiences, right, in, in terms of her politics, um, be beginning at working with the Congress uh, on racial equality, uh, working towards integration, then being inspired by Malcolm towards the black nationalism, and then becoming very close associates with people like Haki Madhubuti and Amiri Baraka. Right, she's going through um, these different periods of development as a writer, as a political person. Um, so this comes from that period when she was in the Nation of Islam. Um, she did later break with the Nation of Islam and move on to her own kind of internationalism, right, that you see or you saw in the, in the recitation of that poem, right? Um, identification with human rights struggles of people all over the world. And she demonstrated as part of you know, an activist movement, human rights movement, and continues to do that. Um, the poem I wanted to read comes from a later period 
Um, it's from her book, A Blues Book for Blue Black Magical Women. It's the post Nation of Islam period. Um, I'll read this one and then we'll go on to Lucille Clifton. This woman vomiting her hunger over the world, this melancholy woman forgotten before memory came, this yellow movement bursting forth like Coltrane's melodies, all mouth, buttocks moving like palm trees, this honey-coated Alabamian woman raining rhythms of blue-black smiles, this yellow woman carrying beneath her breast pleasures without tongues, this woman whose body weaves desert patterns, this woman wet with wandering, reviving the beauty of forests and winds, is telling you secrets. Gather up your odors and listen as she sings the mold from memory. There is no place for a soft black woman. There is no smile green enough or summertime words warm enough to allow my growth. As in my head, I see my history standing like a shy child, and I chant lullabies as I ride past on horseback, tasting the thirst of yesterday tribes, bearing the ancient black woman, me, singing, hi, 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 like a slow scent beneath the sun, and I dance my creation and my grandmother's gathering from my bones like great wooden birds spread their wings while their long-legged laughter stretches the night. And I taste the seasons of my birth, mangoes, papayas, drink my woman coconut milks, stalk the ancient grandfathers sipping on proud afternoons, walk with a song round my waist, tremble like a newborn child, troubled with new breaths, and my singing becomes the only sound of a blue, black, magical woman walking, womb ripe, walking, loud with warnings, walking, making pilgrimage to herself, walking. So that's the fully, fully, fully <coughs> woman Sonia in that collection of poems. Um, I wanted to bring this book to everybody's attention. Um, the poet Gloria Hall, Akasha Gloria Hall, at some point uh, recognized that there was um, some kind of spir spiritual shift that took place in the 1980s when people who were involved in the political struggle started to think about um, the role of spiritual practice within the struggle, right? So she decided to interview several black women writers and to get them to talk about their own uh, spiritual disciplines, their own ways of accessing the spirit, um, the relevance of spirituality to their work. And I thought, those of you who've been coming faithfully to these programs might enjoy this book, Soul Talk. Right? And one of the women interviewed is uh, Lucille Clifton. Um, <coughs> Lucille Clifton's uh, section in the book is very interesting because she spends a lot of time talking about being able to communicate with the dead. So those of you who are not afraid to think of those things. <laughs> and that's a major part of Clifton's spirituality. Um, her mother came to her at a certain point and then continued an ongoing relationship with her through a lot of different strategies. Found it very interesting. So, you do a Clifton? Oh, okay. Um, let's, not, let's not monopolize the conversation here. Anybody want to become yeah. get involved? <laughs>